Will this can of garden seeds grow a survival garden that can feed your family during challenging times? Hi, I'm Kenny. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. We are encouraging everyone to grow a garden, especially this year. Our supply lines are not quite as stable as what we would hope, and growing your own garden means that you have lots of nutritious food, and it can certainly help with your food bills. In this video, we are going to show you the germination results from this can of seeds. You might be surprised by what we discovered. A couple of months ago, we pulled out two of these cans of garden seeds that were packaged for the 2012 season. We decided that this was a really great year to pull those seeds out and see if we could live off of those seeds and have a successful garden. We thought it was pretty interesting that the seed can photo really doesn't represent the kinds of vegetables that are in there. But that being said, off we go. It's always like Christmas when you're opening a number 10 can to see what's really inside of it. And in this seed can, we discovered a nice variety of all non-hybrid seeds, which is important when you're saving seeds because those are the seeds that will be true to the parent when you save the seeds and plant them again the next year. There were cold weather crops as well as warm weather crops, which is another important factor in your ability to extend the harvest and grow for a longer period of time. Whether or not your seeds actually germinate depends on environmental factors as well as internal factors. The environmental factors that will affect seed germination is temperature, light, soil pH, moisture, oxygen, and the growth medium that you plant those seeds in. If you want to learn more about that, visit our post Seed Can Germination Results, Can We Depend on Seed Vaults, and we go in depth in what those factors are. Now the internal germination factors include the original quality of the seed, um, its age. As seeds age, the germination rate decreases. Some seeds will germinate for a much longer period of time than other varieties of seeds. And then dormancy requirements. Some seeds will actually require cold stratification or to be kept at a very low temperature for a period of time. Every seed is different and that contributes to the overall germination rate. As we're testing the seeds in this can, we performed a couple of different tests. The first is a float germination test. Now the reliability of this test is not as accurate as we would hope. I wouldn't depend on this but it was kind of interesting to look at the results. We placed 10 seeds in each cup and then we filled the cup partway with water and allowed it to sit for 15 minutes. At that 15 minute time marker, we noted the amount of seeds that floated and those that had stayed on the bottom. The seeds that are floating are considered seeds that would not germinate. The other test I think is a more accurate test and that's the paper towel germination test. We took 10 seeds from every packet and placed them on a dampened paper towel. Then we folded the top of the paper towel over on the top and slid it inside of a Ziploc bag. The Ziploc bag was dated with the seed variety, the date that we started the test, along with a number of days that we would expect to see germination take place. Then we placed this in a warm area. We actually put it underneath my desk where I keep my heater while I'm working so that it really was in a nice warm place. It wasn't very light, which came into play in a little while, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. If you are performing this test, you do not want to put those in direct sunlight. The most important seed germination test is the one that takes place in your own garden, in your own soil. The next thing that we did was to take all the spring crop seeds and plant them directly in our garden soil. Succession planting will help you to get more of a crop over a longer period of time. Theoretically, we should do seven day intervals for lettuce and spinach, 10 day intervals with peas, and 14 day planting intervals with beets. As we planted these out in the garden, we did one initial planting and then two weeks later, we planted those same things again a few rows over. And most of these seeds didn't do very well. And now we wanna share with you the results of our germination tests. With these yellow onions, we would expect germination to take place within 10 to 12 days. After 14 days, there was no evidence of germination at all on the paper towel test. 
Now the floating test that we did, six of those seeds floated, so that would give us an anticipated germination rate of 40%. Every year, I like to use a method called winter sown to start my onion seeds and other seeds earlier than I could start them out in my yard. So this is how we started these onion seeds. Click the card in the corner to learn more about winter sown or a poor man's greenhouse. Now, if you notice after 30 days, none of these onions had germinated. The photo on the right is a picture of the top of a milk carton of onion seeds that I had planted five days to a week later. And you can see that all of those were starting to sprout and looked healthy and robust. And yet none of the stored canned onion seeds had sprouted. As far as the peppers go, we would have expected germination on our peppers to occur within about 10 to 12 days, but after 14 days there was no evidence of germination at all on the paper towel test. On the floating test, six of them floated, which would have indicated about a 40% rate. So not real good correlation here again. On the paper towel test, there was no evidence of germination after 14 days on our lettuce seeds. The float test showed that we should have only had about a 10% germination rate. Lettuce usually goes crazy in our garden, but we had no evidence of germination at all after 30 days of planting them in our garden. With our winter squash, we expected germination in seven to 10 days. And here again, after 14 days, there was no evidence at all that they were gonna germinate. The float test indicated that none of them would germinate and this time they actually correlate fairly closely. We see similar results with our zucchini, 10% germination rate on the paper towel test and also 10% on the float test. With our spinach, we expected germination in eight to 10 days. After the 14 days, we had 10% germination. Based on the float test, we had expected a 20% germination rate. So not too much different, but still maybe not right on. And yet, this is the big shocker. In the garden, the spinach seeds went crazy and we had a really good germination rate. I think it could have had to do something with maybe the requirements for light for germinating the spinach seeds. Maybe there wasn't enough light in the warm spot under my desk for them to be stimulated to grow because once they were in the garden, they performed very differently than both of the other germination tests indicated that they would. With cantaloupe, germination generally occurs in seven days. After 14 days, we had 20% germination as compared with the float test, which indicated there would be no germination at all. So who knows on that one? Cauliflower, the paper towel test for the cauliflower showed a 20% germination rate and the float test a 70% germination rate. With our cabbage, the expected germination time is 10 to 12 days. After the 14 days, we had 30% germination. But according to the float test, we should have had 100% germination. Now the peas were kind of surprising to me because we have a 30% germination rate in the paper towel test and the float test where there was a 100% germination rate. But when we planted them in the garden, we didn't have any of them germinate. We ended up replanting with newer pea seeds just to ensure that we had a crop this year. The photo on the right shows the new pea seeds that we planted, which came up very quickly and were robust. On the paper towel test, our beets had a 40% germination rate. With the float test, it showed that we would have zero germination. The cucumbers, about a 50% germination rate, and the float test showed that we should have a 90% germination rate. Our yellow crookneck summer squash showed a 50% germination rate on the paper towel test. The float test showed there would be zero germination. The corn germinated fairly well. The paper towel test, we received a 60% germination rate. The float test indicated that we would have a 100% germination rate. The carrot showed a 70% germination rate based on the paper towel test, and the float test showed about a 60% germination rate. Carrots are a really finicky crop to germinate in your garden bed, and we weren't able to get the carrot seeds to germinate at all in our garden bed. We're usually successful with carrot crops. We grow them every year and over winter, and John makes us sick of all the carrots that we are eating on a regular basis. Yeah, baby. Eggplant had a 70% germination rate on the paper towel test, and an 80% on the float test. The green beans actually had a 90% germination rate on the paper towel test and 100% with the float test. And we had two different varieties of tomatoes. The brandy wine had a 90% germination rate on the paper towel test and a 50% on the float test. And Rutger tomato was exactly the same with a 90% germination rate on the paper towel test 
and a 50% on the float test. Radish has showed a 90% germination rate on the paper towel test and a 90% germination rate with the float test. It was interesting to note that in the garden, while we received a fairly high germination rate, they almost fail to thrive. These, after four weeks, there's still just these little seedlings in the garden and the, the days have been sunny and warm. I mean, it's gotten down really cold some of the nights, but these radishes should be flourishing and they're kind of showing a little bit of a failure to thrive. We're not quite sure why, but I'm not sure we're actually gonna get radishes out of these. We'll see. When it comes to seed storage, it's so important that it's done correctly. Optimal storage conditions are cool and dry. Typically, seeds have a four-year viability at 65 to 70 degrees. Each time you can drop that temperature by five or six degrees, you double the viable storage life. And if you want to store them in a freezer, you can have an indefinite shelf life with most seeds. The World Seed Vault freezes seeds in order to create an indefinite shelf life. That is no guarantee that you are going to be able to have a viable seed, but it definitely improves your chances. The big question is, were these seed cans worth the investment? Well, first of all, they contained non-hybrid seeds, which means that we can collect the seeds and plant future crops indefinitely using those seeds. So that was a really good thing. The can contained both cold weather crops and warm weather crops. Good job. However, seed viability decreases over time. That's just how nature works. The longer these seeds are stored, the less viable they're going to be. After this experiment, we concluded that if this is the route that you want to take, we would purchase a new can or a new bucket of survival seeds at least every five years. Now, don't throw the old ones away. Keep them for a backup because some of those seeds could be viable for a really long time. But the ideal way to make sure that you always can have a survival garden is to have your family survival seed bank. And this is what we do. Quite frankly, I have to admit that we have a whole lot more seeds than what is in this picture, but we accumulate our seeds on a regular basis. Some of them we save from the crops that we have grown. You can see that some of them in Ziploc bags and a little medicine or vitamin bottles and in glass canning jars. Those are all good ways to store your seeds. Every year when the seeds are clearanced, I'll go and pick up a bunch of the packaged seeds and add them to our seed bank. We store some of them in the number 10 cans with the plastic lid. That works really well to help create a nice environment for them. But just in a nice big carry tote, you can store a lot of seeds. However you decide to do this for your family, that's perfect. But just make sure that you store seeds. When times get tough, like right now while we're going through this pandemic, Springtime is a great time to plant your garden because we don't really know what's gonna happen in our future. But if you can plant that garden for your family, then you can feed them and feed them well as long as you have good soil and the seeds to grow. We invite you to check out the post that we made this video from, Seed Can Germination Results. Can we depend on seed vaults? You might also be interested in the first video that we made for this challenge, Survival Garden Challenge, where we actually talk about the seed can, what's in it, what we would have done differently because of the different crops that are really important for a survival garden. We also have a video, Best Survival Crops, where we walk you through what we think are the ideal crops to be able to feed your family during challenging times. Check it out. It's time to grow a garden. Whether you're a first timer or an expert gardener, take time this year and plant a garden. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have growing vegetables from stored seeds? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.